Welcome everyone to our course Digital Design with Medilog. In this week, we will start the discussion on combinational logic design. Specifically, we will develop the actual design of various modules that is widely being used in a digital design. Okay. In today's class, we are going to cover code conversion and parity bit generation. This part of these slides are prepared from chapter 4 of Morris Manus book and chapter 5 of Kohavi's book. Before going into the actual design, let us first uh, introduce certain terminology that is being widely used when we analyze a digital circuit. The first one is the fan in and fan out. So when you take a digital gate in a circuit, we have inputs and outputs, right? So these inputs are called fan in and the output is basically fan out in the sense number of output right so the number of inputs are the fan in and the number of outputs are fan out right so so you should uh, know this terminology fan in and fan out there is one more important terminology it's called uh, propagation delay in a uh, design and which is a very important factor in deciding the circuit target clock okay so propagation time is effectively saying the time required to propagate a signal through a gate or a switch right a switch a gate output from one value to another so the next terminology that i'm going to introduce is propagation delay the propagation delay is the finite amount of time required to propagate signal through a gate okay or to switch the gate output from one value to another it's kind of the computational delay that needs the particular gate okay and uh, once i decide the clock field say suppose i have a path which is uh, so although i'm talking about gate you can map it to a rt level design as well say in one path there are three gates or four gates okay so this is my uh, input and this is my output right and there is one more path where there are only two gates okay so every gate may not have the delay same uh, it depends on how do you going to implement that uh, so if the delay of these nodes are say one 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 unit so this the overall delay is four units on the other hand if say this is three unit and this is four unit the delay of this path is seven unit right it's not only the number of uh, gates that are in the path but also it depends on the propagation delay of that particular gate okay and the clock uh, that we are going to uh, pass to this circuit uh, should be at least long enough so that i can compute this operation right this is the seven unit of time so one clock is like this so this is one clock period this is the another clock so this must be seven unit of time right i'm assuming there is a register here and then the register here and it should be more than seven units of time because there is some setup and hold time of the register as well okay so this way i will identify all the combinational path and i'll identify what is the delay uh, of various paths and maximum delay will determine by the clock period next thing that uh, we'll talk about given a combinational circuit how to identify what is the functionality of that particular circuit okay so for example i have taken one design here where abc is the input and output is c0 and s this is basically the full order circuit that will introduce later so given this i can always identify uh, the final expression of c0 in terms of abc input okay it can be done by forward forward rewriting or backward rewriting what I can do, I can uh, start in backward manner. Say, suppose I have C0, which is uh, getting assigned, say, this is X and this is Y. So, I will say ki this is nothing but X or X or Y, right? And then I will see this X is nothing but AB, right? So, this is AB or and this is nothing but uh, y is nothing but say suppose this is p and q pq right 
and then we'll identify uh, sorry this is q is nothing but c right so i can rewrite uh, q by c and p is uh, nothing but a or b so this is my final expression corresponding to c0 this is called backward rewriting You can do a forward iterating similar manner. Say I'll take this, so I'll ju just do the level wise that what is the output corresponding to this after level all the gates at the level one. So this is A B, this is A or B, right? So this is A B, this is A or B. Then I'll move to the next level of gates, level two gates. And since I have already defined the output of each level one gates, all the input of these gates are now defined, right? So now I can say for this AND gate, one input is A or B and the other input is C. So this is doing AND, so this will be A or B and C. So once this all these gates of level 2 are defined, then I will go to the level 3 one, right. So level 3, uh, since this is A, B and this is A or B and this is doing A or B, X and Y. So this X is A, B and Y is this. So I can rewrite and I will get the expression that I got here. So I will always end up getting the same expression but you can go from input to output direction or output to input direction. You just keep writing the terms. So this way we will end up having the expression corresponding to each output of that circuit in terms of the inputs. So what is the objective of doing this? So you get what is the functionality of this. Uh, and you can do certain many things like you can actually try to optimize this so you get some expression you can convert into sum of product form then you can try to optimize it using uh, two level logic minimization like Carnot map or coin McCluskey or you, after that uh, when you get this minimal expression corresponding to all the outputs and then you try to do the multi-level logic minimization where you try to uh, find the common sum expression among uh, the multiple outputs and then you minimize that also. So, it's sometime uh, thus the implementation that you obtain may not be the optimal one. So, you can always analyze it uh, and get the optimal implementation. So, for that you need to identify the actual expression for each output in terms of inputs and then you do all this analysis that we have discussed so far in the class. So, how do you approach to develop a conventional circuit? You have to follow these steps effectively. The first you have to identify what are the inputs and outputs of your design and how many bits are there okay and then you identify the relation of the output in terms of the inputs which can be given as a truth table if the number of its uh, inputs are are uh, not that big okay so i will identify the relation between the inputs and outputs then uh, I can always uh, represent that particular each output in terms of Boolean function which is maybe sum of product or product sum expression for each output and then I will do the minimization. I will do this minimization to get a simplified expression. So that is my input output relation now that I am going to implement in hardware. Okay. It may be in a language in any hardware description language may be very log that we are going to use in this course okay and then uh, you write a test bench uh, which will give various input scenarios to this design and get the output from your implementation and it will say whether your design is functionally correct or not okay so that is how, how we are going to proceed for all the modules that we are going to discuss here the first example that we are going to take is the code conversion example and specifically you are going to take bcd to xs3 conversion so BCD uh, as you have discussed in this course binary coded decimal is encode uh, the decimal number 0 to 9 in binary. So we need 4 bits A, B, C, D and this is nothing but the binary representation of these numbers. The first row is 0, next one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 and this is uh, well understood. And XS3 code is uh, another code which is basically binary plus 3, right? Whatever the binary implement value or VCD value, you have to just add 3. And this is my XS3 code corresponding to these numbers 0 to 9. You can see here that it is 0 and this is 3, this is 1, this is so 4 and so on. So again, I need 4 bits. So for this particular code conversion, 
uh, I understood that my input is VCD so I have three inputs and my output is also XS3 which is basically 3 to 12 which is again I need four bits so I, I define my number of bits uh, in inputs and outputs and then I just write this relation using truth table. So this is one of the example that I am talking about. You can always think about any other code conversion like say BCD to gray, gray to BCD or many other cyclic code and many other weighted code we have discussed in this course, right? So that we can discuss. So once you get this uh, relation, your job is 50% uh, done. You know how your output bits are dependent on the inputs, okay? Then what I am going to do is I am going to take each output bit individually, okay? And I will try to express this in terms of the inputs and which is quite simple because I know I will just consider the bits where this output is 1. And corresponding this one, I am going to take this input combination. And this input combination is a mean term, right? Because there are all the variables are there. For example, this first one is represented by A bar, B bar, C bar, D bar. This is corresponding to the, I am talking about Z and I am talking about the first one, the first one. The second one is corresponding to 2, which is a bar b bar c d bar right this is 0 this is 1 and so on so this way i will say my output z will be 1 if this is 1 or this one or uh, the, you get corresponding to 3 which is uh, sorry this is 0 then uh, this is 1 2 right so this is 2 then 4 6 and 8 so you can write 4 as a bar b c bar d bar or right so this is 4 so this is a bar b c d bar this is 6 and then you have 8 which is a b bar c bar d bar which is 8. So I am going to say that my z equal to this or this or this or this or this because if any of them is 1 if the value satisfy this one of them my output will be 1 right if the value is 0 0 0 0 input value my output will be 1 because this this particular product term will be 1 at that time so this way I am effectively expressing my z in terms of my inputs and the main terms similar manner I will also express my y in terms of the inputs again I am just considering the mean term corresponding to the ones right I will say that if the input is 0 or this is 3 this is 7 and 8 then my y will be 1 similar way I can write my y in terms of the product term corresponding to this okay and similarly for x and w so these are the mean terms one there okay so I'll, I can write a SOP expression like this for each of the output in terms of the input main terms, okay? So once I have done that, uh, so I can implement a Verilog circuit just having this expression, which is also giving you the correct output. But as you have discussed, if uh, the number of literals determine the cost or the area of the design, so my objective is to minimize this expression. And what I can do now, I can use because this has only four inputs, so Carnot map I can implement easily and identify the minimal expression, right? So how do I do that? Let us start with say Z, Z is this. So what I have seen that is basically 0, 2, 4, 6 and 8, right? So 0, 2, 4, 6 and 8. So if I put them in a Carnot map where I just put CD in the columns and AB in the rows here, so it will be these ones. Right, this one, one, two, three, four, six, five. Right, so one, two, three, four, five. There are five ones. And remember here, this input combinations from 10 to 15 are don't care here because in a BCD representation, uh, those value will never occur. So I can expect that those input will never come. So, so then I can consider them in don't care 
and I can utilize those don't care to re minimize the expression. If those don't care occur, my circuit will give not expected output. But since then will never occur, I can simply use those don't care uh, to minimize this expression. So what are the ex uh, don't cares? It is effectively this 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15, those values and those don't care are uh, given by cross here, right? These are the don't cares. There are six values. Now you can see easily that in this uh, Carnot map, I can club this with this and this will end up giving me only D bar, right? Because A is, AB is varying on all possible cases, C is varying 0 and 1, so D is constant which is D bar, right? So it is D bar for me. So my minimal expression corresponding to Z is D bar, right? Whatever my D value, my output will be complement of that value. In the similar manner, I can optimize, I get my minimal expression corresponding to Y, X and W, all outputs. This is already uh, discussed in Carnot so I am not going into detail. So again, the idea is that all the mean terms where bits are 1, I just put 1 in this in this Carnot map and then I can combine them with don't care. Is Here it is again, I can just combine this 4 and this 4. So this will give me C bar D bar and this will give me C D. Similarly for X, I can put all the ones where the values are 1, you can cross check and all the don't cares and I can uh, see that I can club this, this two which will may give me my uh, B C bar D bar. Then I can club this with this. So this will give me B bar and C which is, is this B bar and C and I can club this with this which will give me B bar D. Okay, so this way I also get the expression corresponding to W which is A, B, C, B, B, D. Okay. Once I get this, this is my minimal expression corresponding to my each output in terms of the inputs which is well understood. Then I have also discussed that you can also do this uh, because this circuit has, uh, you can think about I have a con code converter which is, has input is A, B, C and D, my output is W, X, Y and Z which is B, C, D to X, S, 3 converter. So I have four outputs and they have uh, input same inputs A, B, C, D and I already obtained the minimal expression. So what I can do now, I can do the multi-level logic optimization. I will try to identify any common sub-expressions that they are among the minimal expression of those uh, W, X, Y, Z. And the answer is yes. For example, if you take this C, D, I can rewrite like this C, D and I can just write like this. X, I can, uh, which, uh, which is basically B bar C, uh, B bar D and B, C bar D bar, which I can write like B bar C plus D and B, C, D plus complement. Okay. Similarly, this A, B, C and B, D, I can write like A, B, C plus D. So what I identify that C plus D is the common sub-expression. Expression and in fact, it is common sub-expressions in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 locations. So I have effectively 5 use of them. In 2 places it is complement but I can always get C plus D and then I can just do a not get after that. Okay. So this way I can instead of writing is 2 level implementation I can have a factored form and have a multi level implementation and that implementation is shown here. And you can clearly see that this I do this C plus D here. Right? This is C plus D and that I am using in two places here and here uh, in computation of W and computation of X, I just use their normal form and then I complement this and I get CD bar, CD bar and that I have used computation of Y and this part, right? So I just use this to computation of Y 
and also computation of x. So, I can so this is something uh, is a good example that how uh, you can minimize your circuit. So, instead of 5 uh, uh, OR gate computing C plus D, I am just having one OR gate and that is being used in 5 occasions. Okay. So, this way uh, I can just have this circuit which is, uh, is uh, corresponding to the final expression, uh, multi level expression of this W, Y, X and W, uh, Z, right. So, for example, if you see here, this is uh, Z is uh, D prime. So, this is your D. So, this going to this and this is D prime. This is my Z. Then uh, if I look into this uh, Y, which is CD. So, CD is coming here and this is my CD, C, C or D bar and then there is order of this. So, this is my Y. Similarly, for X, it is B bar. So, B bar is coming here this is my B bar and it is ended with C or D. So, C or D is coming here. So, this is my B bar C or D, right. This is B bar C or D and here it is coming B and this is coming C D bar, right. This is my B and C or D bar and then this is the OR of that. So, this way this is my final implementation corresponding to this code conversion. You can see here that the number of gates that I have used only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 boolean gates and 3 not gates. So, the area is quite small, right. One may argue that why I have not just written whatever is my input say input is 4 bit which is say your DC decimal number is x, x plus 3. You could have write just y equal to x plus 3 that is also a correct implementation. If I am assuming this x is a 4 bit number, right. So, this is a OR 220, which is the 320, which is 4 bit x and y is also 4 bit. I just write assign y equal to this. So, this is also a correct implementation of this conversion, but here you can uh, see here that I have to use a 4 bit full adder, okay. I will discuss this in subsequent classes that if you take a ripple carry adder kind of implementation the delay will be much more than uh, this circuit and also the overall area will be also uh, more because there I have to use four full adders right for each bit I have to use one full adder. Uh, so, the delay and area both will be larger than this. So, although you could have write this and you get up having a full adder implementation but this is much more straightforward implementation or optimized implementation of this converter. Let me just uh, write this Verilog code. Uh, remember writing Verilog code for this uh, combinational part is pretty easy because you do not have to bother about any clock uh, or uh, synchronization aspect because here it is a combinational part. But uh, for the completeness of the course, I will write the Verilog code corresponding to the each module that I will cover in this class. So, the module name is BCD to XS3, you can give any name. Then you have to specify the inputs and outputs. For me, the input is A, B, C, D, 4 bits and output is W, A, Z, W, X, Y. All of them are single bit and they are wire by default, right? They, they are not registered. And uh, writing this uh, implementation in Verilog is very straightforward. I have to just take the expression corresponding to Z, Y, x and w and I have to write the value. I have just copy pasted this expression here and then I just write n module. So, this is give me a module of this BCD to XS3 conversion where there will be 4 inputs a, b, c, d and the output is z, y, x and w, right. So, this module is developed and it is quite straightforward to write this code, right. But once you write this, I have to make sure that this is actually uh, doing this uh, code conversion, right. So, for that I have to write a test bench. Uh, again, writing uh, a test bench uh, uh, for this kind of module is pretty easy because what you have to do, you have to just give uh, various possible of input over the time and you have to just compare the output, okay. So, I will just explain what I have done. Ideally, you in a test bench you will have you have to instantiate this 
this uh, BCD to XS3 module as DUT and then you have should have a test generator, test sequence generator that will give me this inputs right and the DUT output uh, will be compared with uh, the actual uh, values ok. Uh, so, here I wrote this test bench and all I have not specified this test, uh, test sequence generator as a specific model, but I just put them as a part of this test bench itself. So, what I did I want to make a stable input. So, I just put a register for the input. So, what I did in the test generator I have effectively have a register that will store BCD the BCD number this is 4 bits right. So, this 4 bits will go as input to this duty ok and the output whatever this W, X, Y and Z is coming that will access through XS3 as wire ok. So, I just define them as XS 3, 0, 1, 2 and 3 right. So, uh, 4 bits and then I instantiate this BCD module uh, and as DUT. So, the name of this module in this test bench is DUT where I make the connections very uh, carefully. So, this is very important part when you write test bench corresponding to a conventional circuit you have to make this connections proper right. So, for example, if you see this uh, diagram. So, your D is the LSB, C is the second bit, B is the third bit and A is the 4 bit. So, I make the connections exactly that way right. So, I just put 0 to the D port, 1 to the C port, 2 to the B port and 3 to the A port. Similarly, I just stored this Z in XS0 then Y into because Z is my final bit. Right. So, Z, Y, X and W. So, I make the connections accordingly. Right. So, I make uh, Z as X is 0, Y is X is 3, X is this and this. So, uh, you know the syntax of this. So, this way you make this connection effectively. Right. So, what we have to do now next is we have to uh, give the clock because we have. So, what I want to do effectively is uh, I just want to make sure that in each clock I will give a new value of BCD value and I will see what is my output is coming right. So, to do that we have to define a clock. So, I just define a clock like this which I have already discussed earlier. So, it is basically clock period of 20 right the clock will come like this. So, this is duty cycle of 10 right this is 10 this is 10. So, overall 20 right this after every 10 unit of time clock will become complement of its value ok. And since there is a register I also put reset and what I am doing here is uh, I put a always block ok. So, in the always block what I am doing is uh, uh, I initially I just I, I just put a value i which will go from 0 to 9 right. What I want to do right here is I just give the value 0 1 2 3 4 and I will see what is the corresponding output. So, at the time uh, whenever reset is 1 I just make this i equal to 0. So, what I am doing here is initially I make clock equal to 0. So, I start clock value is 0 then after obviously 10 unit it will automatically become 1 and then again it will be 0 and so on. Initially make reset 1 and after 1 clock unit of time I make a reset 0 ok. So, this reset is something we usually use to set the initial value of the registers ok. And in the always block it will govern by the passage of clock or process of reset. So, whenever reset or clock value changes this will execute and whenever reset is 1 uh, I make i equal to 0 I could have make BCD also to 0 because I just initialize the value of BCD to 0 ok. Uh, uh, and then uh, what I did is basically uh, I give the value of i to the BCD and after every 20 unit of time that means it is a time of 1 clock I make i plus plus. Right, that means I will increment the value of i. So, this process will go on and once I become value of i equal to 10, uh, I put dollar finish then my simulation will complete. So, effectively what I am doing, I am starting from 0, I will just every clock I will increase the value to 1, then 2, then 3 every clock and I will just pass that value to BCD because BCD is connected to this duty. Right? So, whenever this BCD value become 1, that means 1 is going to the design. Right? Whenever the value after next clock when your BCD become 2, now 2 you are passing to the uh, your BCD to that converter module right. So, this way. So, this way I will just do it for 10 unit 10 possible values and I will cross check. 
and this is my simulation result as I mentioned that I, I do not put this bc equal to 0. So, initially my x value is not unknown right x and my output is also unknown because I do not have any known value. And uh, so, what I am printing here in a dollar monitor I print the time and the value of bcd and value of the xs3. So, whatever the input and output ok and this monitor will work whenever the value any of this value gets changed. So, initially it was bcdx and output is this. So, after 20 unit of time, so whenever this uh, bcd equal to 1, again uh, this uh, this value will pass to this duty and it will execute. So, as a result now I uh, will give 0 right because i equal to 0 and corresponding value of x s 3 is 3. So, this is correct right. After 20 unit of time that means at time 50 my bcd value will pass 1 because the every 20 unit of time here I am pass increment the value. I am passing 1 and now I am getting output 4 right this is from real simulation. So, this way every 20 unit new value is passed and corresponding output is observed every 20 unit of time new value is passed and uh, corresponding value is observed and you can see here that the outputs are actually correct right. So, if it is this is 4 it is 7 this is 5 this is 8 this is 6 this is 9 and so on. So, this is correct implementation. And once everything is done, whenever I reach i equal to 10, my simulation will be completed. Okay. So, this kind of this clock thing I uh, will put in every test case, I will not going to discuss them in detail in other time. Next module I am going to consider parity bit generator. So, it is basically check number of 1 in a given input. And uh, the example that I have taken is 3 bit input, uh, but you could have taken any number of bits. And the output of this design is 1 whenever you have odd number of 1 in the input value. Okay. So, you are basically in a parity bit generator what is the input you have the example I have taken 3 bits. So, x, y and z and output is a single bit p. Okay. This is parity generator. And then you can actually construct the truth table say for example, 0, 0, 0, x, y and z what is the output the p is 0 if it is 0 0 1 it is 1 0 1 0 it is 1 because number of 1 is odd then 0 1 1 it is 0 1 0 0 it is 1 1 0 1 it is 0 1 1 0 it is 0 then 1 1 1 it is 1 and you can understand that I can now take this parity bits and I try to using Carnot map I can exp, uh, I can try to minimize, but this I have already discussed in multi level optimization that parity bit generator these bits are actually cannot be clubbed together ok. So, they are always separated by uh, they are not adjacent to each other right. So, if I just take this expression I have to write this right this is x bar y bar z then this is x bar y z bar then this is x y bar z bar then this is x y and z. So, these 4 bits this is my expression no simplification is possible if I just take this one. But as I have already shown that if you do a multi level minimization for this expression you will end up getting x or y x or z. So, this is much simpler expression. So, implementing this in Verilog is uh, quite straightforward. So, in my case I have x y z as the input and output is a parity and my module name is parity generator and I can write this expression the expression that I got from Carnot math or I can write the minimal expression both will work right. So, this is very simple and for test bench also uh, in the test bench I again keep a 3 bit input value and output parity I store in out. Here I instantiate this parity generate module and connect this value correctly to this each bit and then output parity I just connect to the output uh, wire. So, this part I have already discussed which will generate the clocks and initialize this. So, this part where I am giving the actual value and I am here also I am starting from 0 I am giving all the value of i from 0 to 7 and whenever I reach to 8 I will stop and I will going to monitor the value of uh, the output parity bit and corresponding to input value and the corresponding parity bit uh, whenever uh, the value changes and this is the simulation result 
and you can see here that because I have not initialized anything to my reg, initially it is don't care and output is also x. Then after next clock the value becomes 0, output is 0 whenever it is 1, after another 20 unit of time or the next clock it is 1, so output is 1, it is 2, output is 1 because there is a 1, 1 and again next clock it is 3, so output is 0, uh, next clock 4, output is 1, 5, output is 0, 6, output is 0, 7, output is 1. So it is exactly matching with my expected output. So this is a correct implementation. Okay. So this way we can take uh, any combinational module and we can develop their combinational circuit. Okay. And write test bench to verify this. With this I conclude today's class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.